All right, let's talk about a bit about how to optimize a memory allocator. I think in class before we started doing online lectures, we talked a little bit about the buddy system. But I'm going to start by reviewing the buddy system, and then I'm going to talk about how to optimize the buddy system in order to make it uh, a more efficient allocator that you would actually want to use for a sort of optimized use case. The way the buddy system works is as follows. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with a constant size chunk of memory as a heap. For this example, I'm going to use a one megabyte heap. And the way our one megabyte heap is going to be managed is we are going to have an a array of free lists. And the slots in the array of free, free lists are going to track power of two size, constant size blocks. So if we have a one megabyte free list, that means we want to have a array of, or sorry, a one megabyte heap. We want to have an array of free lists. And this array of free lists is going to be indexed according to the power of two that the items in that, in that cell in the free list, or that slot in the free list, are in size. So if we have one megabyte heap, then the largest size that we're going to deal with is going to be um, one megabyte blocks, which have a size of, I'm a little bit above the camera, one megabyte blocks are two to the 20 bytes. So that means this slot here, which is going to be slot 20 in our array, is going to store blocks of size two to the 20. And when we initialize this heap, we're going to end up with one thing on this free list, which is going to be a block, and this block is going to be one megabyte. Now one complication with this design is that this data structure that we have is only able to track amounts of memory up to one megabyte. So if we want to do allocations larger than one megabyte, then that means that we either have large allocations, the same way we did with the simple memory allocator, where we just go out to MMAP to handle the allocation, or we need to do what we need to do anyway for the optimized allocator, which is have multiple heaps, or what we're talking about for the optimized allocator is going to be multiple arenas, and that's going to give us some benefits with multiple threads too. But when we run out of space in this buddy system managed heap, when we want to use more than one megabyte of space total, the way we're going to want to deal with that is to just allocate an entire additional heap to do more allocations then. But when we're not dealing with that, then when we are only doing allocations that will fit in this one megabyte, the way we can deal with that is we're going to have the slots in this array. They're going to track uh, size 2 to the 19, 2 to the 18, 2 to the 17, all the way down. Then the bottom of the array here, we do have a like, somewhere down here, we have a 2 to the 0 slot. Um, that is a natural side effect of the data structure. We are, in fact, going to be dealing with having a zero slot in the array, we're not going to do anything with it. That would be tracking blocks of size uh, two to the zero is one byte. We can't really handle tracking one byte allocations efficiently. So we're just going to sort of ignore the bottom couple slots in this array. And the smallest slot that we're going to deal with is whatever the like smallest allocation we can deal with according to our data structure. And it turns out that in the simple version of this buddy system allocator, the number that that ends up being, uh, the minimum allocation size is going to be around 40 bytes. The next power of two is 64. Uh, 64 is two to the sixth. So slot six is going to be our lowest slot. So we have slot 20 at the top because we're dealing with a one megabyte heap. And then we have slots in our array of free lists associated with this heap. We've allocated an array of, well, it ends up having to be 21 slots because we have to have slot zero through slot 20, but we're only using slots number six through 20 because the lower number slots are uh, talking about sizes too small to be useful. So now if we want to go do memory allocations, it's going to work like this. So someone's going to call malloc 
uh, let's say malloc 128k, and we know that 128k is 2, 1 megabyte is 2 to the 20, that's 512, 256, 128, so that's going to be 2 to the 17. So we're going to look in slot number 17 here, and we're going to discover that there are no blocks in slot 17, because when we allocated this heap, we allocated a single block of size 1 meg, and we stuck it in slot 20. So in the buddy system, the way we're going to find mem memory when we don't find something in a slot is we're going to split an item from the next slot up. So we look in slot 18, which was size uh, 256k, and it turns out that looking in slot 18 doesn't actually help us that much either, because slot 18 is also empty. There's nothing there. So we have to recursively do this until either we find a slot or we get to the top of the array. In this case, uh, one megabyte, the size of our heap, is going to probably be a compile time constant in our application. Maybe it's configurable, but it's probably a constant. And so we're going to recurse or loop until we get up to slot 20 and discover that it's empty. And at that point, we have failed to allocate out of this heap. And either we throw an error and crash if we are just dealing with a single heap, or if we want to do multiple arenas or multiple heaps, not finding something in slot 20 tells us it's time to allocate a whole new heap and then try again. But in this case, we do have something in slot 20. So we're going to go ahead and take that one meg thing out of slot 20. And we're going to split that into two pieces. So slot 20 now has nothing in it. And slot 19 is going to have uh, a 128k in it. Sorry, this is 512k. It's going to have a 512k in it. It's going to have a 512k in it. And then end of list. So there's our heap after we split the 512ks. Now in the buddy system, another important concept is that when we split a block from a larger thing to produce two blocks of a smaller thing, we call those two blocks that we split off buddies. And the thing about buddies is that we know this neat property about their memory addresses, which is that they differ only in one bit. If we consider that our um, memory address here, where this one meg started, was at uh, plus zero, then we know that the one meg block that we just split also started at plus zero, because that one meg block was the entire heap. When we split it into two pieces, those are gonna start at an address of plus zero. That's gonna be the bottom half. And then we're gonna have another block that's going to start at plus 512k because that's the, the top half of the one meg. And we know that. And further we know that the difference in the memory address between the bottom half of the one meg block and the top half of the one meg block is 512k. So if we have the address of the higher address one, we can calculate the address of the lower address one by subtracting 512k bytes from the address. Addresses are just integers. We can do arithmetic on them if we want. Similarly, if we have the address of the lower address one, we can calculate the address of the higher address one by adding 512k. And then there's this neat trick that we can do where we don't actually have to know which one we have. If we just XOR either of these addresses with the size of the block, uh, 2, to the, 2 to the 19, in represented in binary, that will just give us the other buddy effectively doing adding or subtraction, depending on which one we need to do the thing. But that's a distraction for the moment. We won't need that. We just want to remember that these two guys are buddies, but two random other chunks of the same size aren't necessarily buddies. Two blocks are only buddies if they were split from the same parent block of the next size up. So we're going to go ahead and split a 512 to get two 256s. We're not even going to bother putting the second 256 on the list here because we're going to split that into two 128s. 
And we're not even going to bother putting the two 128s on the list, because the thing that we're trying to do here is we're trying to malloc 128. And so I'm going to say that when we malloc 128, the thing that we get back is going to be the address plus zero. And in order to have gotten the address back plus zero, when we split the 128k, or sorry, when we split the one meg, we have to have taken the lower address 512k to split, then we have to have taken the lower address 256k to split, then we have to have taken the lower address 128k in order to return from malloc. Let's malloc 128k again. When we malloc 128k again, we already have a 128k in the in the list for size 128k in slot 17. And so we're going to get that value back as our return from malloc. And it turns out that we know the address of that. It's going to have an address of plus 128k because it was the top half of the lowest addressed block of size 256k. If we malloc 256, sorry, if we malloc another 128k, we don't actually have a 128k on the list. We got rid of that when we did the second one. So we're going to have to split this 256k, and that's going to give us two more 128ks, leaving us with no 256ks. Now we're going to return one of those, and the one that we're going to return is the one at plus 256k. That's the lower address one. We're just making the assumption that we always return the lower address one either for splitting or allocating. And then the one that we're going to end up here is the 128k. And we actually know its address. It is at 384k. That's its memory address, uh, plus 384k from the base of our heap. All right, so there's our heap. There's our uh, heap with all the, the free blocks that are left in it. We're left with one 128k block, one 512k block. We have three allocated blocks of size um, 128k. Let's start freeing them. We're gonna start by freeing this one, which is going to be the, the plus zero. So I'll just cross this whole one out because we're freeing it. And when we free it, we need to insert it into this list in uh, and it doesn't actually matter what order. In order to make this fast, an optimization that we're going to do is that these are actually all doubly linked lists. And because they're doubly linked lists, we can go ahead and find neighbors super fast using this um, arithmetic here. And if we need to remove a buddy from the list, we can do that in constant time with a doubly linked list. If we need to insert something on the list, we can just insert it at the head. But when we go to free this plus zero, the thing that we're going to do next is we're going to do our buddy system arithmetic. We're going to XOR the memory address plus zero with, um, with our size, which is 128k. Zero XOR 128k is, is 128k, which correctly gives us the address of our buddy over here. We look at that buddy. One of the other things that we're going to keep track in the header of every allocation here is a use flag. So we know whether or not that memory is allocated. Because if the memory is not allocated, we can merge together buddies. If the memory is allocated, we don't want to be trying to merge together buddies. So we look at this and we see that plus 128 is, uh, is allocated, so we can't merge it together. So we're just going to go ahead and stick that on the free list of size 128. And we're going to mark the, the, the block of memory at plus zero of size 128 we're going to mark it as being not used. So then later, if we free that, uh, that buddy, we can go ahead and merge properly. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to free this block at plus 256. So when we free the block at plus 256, and remember this is a doubly linked list, we free the block at plus 256, what that's going to, uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to XOR the memory address with the size, which is 128K, and we discovered that that guy we had here, uh, so we're gonna say this one is the one at plus zero, this one is the one at plus 384K, remember? That was the one that we had left over before. So that's our buddy for this guy, and we'll calculate it that it's there, we'll go ahead and look in the header for that block, see that it's free, and that means we can go ahead and merge this buddy with this buddy, 
So we will, in constant time, because this is a doubly linked list, remove this item that we have a pointer to from this list, and then we can go ahead and insert that block of size 256 at address plus 256 into this linked list. So that is how we are able to coalesce with the buddy system is we coalesce buddies. You'll note that we're allowed to have two things of the same size if they aren't buddies on the list because um, only coalescing buddies lets us maintain this list nice and clean, having blocks of all the same size and doing this buddy trickery. When we free our final thing, that lets us merge all the way up. We end up with one block of size one meg after we recursively find buddies and merge, find buddies and merge, find buddies and merge. And that's how the, the buddy system basically works. So in order to get that to happen, we have to have a data structure, both for memory that's on the free lists here, and we have to be able to have a longer version, of, or sorry, a shorter version of that data structure which we could call a header. So the long version is a cell from the free list, and then there's a header for the allocated memory that we know has to have at least a size and a used flag in it. So let's take a look at that data structure real quick. Uh, let me go grab a eraser. So the data structure that we need for this, um, this thing is gonna have two parts. We have the part that is in both the cell and the um, and the header. So let me just call the whole thing struct cell. And then in the header and the cell, we need to have two fields. We need to have a size field and we need to have a used field. And naturally, size is going to be size t, so the size field is going to be eight bytes. The used field could be one bit, because it's just a flag, but it's sort of difficult to only allocate one bit. And in fact, with our alignment restrictions, to make this reasonable, we kind of want to have the header be a multiple of eight bytes. Uh, when we're allocating pointers, pointers want to be allocated aligned at an 8-byte boundary because uh, AMD64 and sort of really any platform wants to have its pointers aligned at the size of the pointer. So we don't want to have a, um, a header that's not sort of an even 8 bytes. Unless we're getting really clever and know that we aren't allocating pointers, we're doing really small allocations or something, something abnormal. So this is gonna end up taking eight bytes too, because the next multiple of eight is going to be, um, is gonna be 16. Now, in addition to that, um, we need to have an arena. So we have an arena ID, and we can get clever here, and actually I kind of wanna get clever here. So we're gonna get clever here by making the arena ID actually be four bytes, so that's a 32-bit integer. And we can pull down our size field to four bytes. So the arena ID will allow us to have sort of a global array of arenas and then allocate from the appropriate arena for some thread or allocate from an arena that has free space in it. And then when we go to free, we can make sure that we free back to the correct arena. But we have to have the arena as part of the header for every allocated block. So we still have a 16-byte uh, a header here, and these are the three fields that we're tracking. Now, not in the header, we have cell pointer next, and cell pointer previous. And that's pretty much all we need here. And these are both also eight bytes. So I guess I said that we had a minimum size of 40 by combining our arena size and used flags saying that we only can have uh, four billion arenas per running program, which does restrict us a little bit, but I think it'll be okay for even most 64-bit programs to limit ourselves to uh, 
4 billion arenas, uh, 32 bits worth of arenas, especially since our current size restriction is restricting us to any 8 uh, any 64-bit size, which means that we don't actually have to limit our arenas to one megabyte. So this should be fine. It ends up being uh, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus two more 8s is going to be 32. And so we could actually take advantage of slot 5 for our minimum allocation size. But our minimum allocation size here is still 32, which is pretty big. So we'd like to try to shrink that down a little bit more. We can shrink that down a little bit more by doing tricky optimizations. The first optimization that I would like to do is instead of using eight bytes for size, I want to use one byte for size. And the reason we can get over with using one byte for size is that in the body system, we know that all the block sizes that we're allocating are going to be powers of two. So rather than storing the number of bytes of an allocation in size, number of bytes if it were a size t, instead we're going to store which power of two the number is. So if the size is, is two to the k, instead of storing two to the k, we're just gonna store the k, or in other words, instead of storing the size, we're just gonna store which slot in our, uh, in our array of free lists we're gonna be using here. That gives us a maximum size of two to the 255, which is going to be plenty big. We'll never be allocating objects that big. So one byte is plenty of space for size if size can only be powers of two. Next thing that we can do is we can realize that this used flag does not have to be four bytes. The used flag can be one byte. And we still have this complication here of we do need to have at least some space for the arena. We probably could get down to two bytes for the arena. Then we only have uh, 64K possible arenas. If we make each arena be like a gig, 64K gigs is probably enough memory for our application, but we can't actually really get the header down to four bytes on a 64-bit platform because of that pointer alignment issue. The smallest we really wanna get this down to is going to be eight bytes. So for that reason, we're gonna go ahead and use the full four bytes for the arena, and we're actually gonna waste two bytes. We're gonna have a, uh, like an underscore spacer or underscore reserved field in here that's just gonna use up the extra two bytes to make it so that our header is going to be eight bytes to maintain that pointer alignment. So this reduces our header size, so the overhead on each allocation to one machine word or eight bytes, but we still have a uh, sort of minimum allocation size of 24 bytes, which is a little bit bigger than we'd like. I'd like to get down to a minimum allocation size of, uh, of uh, 16 bytes, have an eight byte header, and then have always have eight bytes of user memory after that eight byte header. Um, if someone allocates one byte, it's still gonna take uh, eight bytes for the header, plus we'll give them an additional eight bytes for their one byte, so they get they get eight of 16 bytes allocated, but we can sort of assume that people are not expecting the memory allocator to be super efficient for tiny allocations. So being efficient on eight byte allocations is a reasonable place to be. And to do that, we have to somehow get this 16 bytes, which is two pointers, down to eight bytes. And the way I'm gonna do that is just by saying that each pointer is going to be four bytes. Unfortunately, on AMD64, pointers aren't really four bytes, they're eight bytes. So these can't be pointers anymore. What they have to be is offsets. And in this case, we're gonna make those offsets be just 32-bit ints. So next and previous are now 32-bit ints. And what those are gonna be relative to is the zero address of the arena. So you can see here, we have this one megabyte, which is the whole arena. And so in the metadata for this arena, which we're gonna store in some globals arena array that is then going to be used, uh, we're gonna use this arena value to index into it on free. In the metadata for the arena, part of the data that we're gonna store is the start address of this one megabyte. And then the way we have to use these next and previous values, which are no longer pointers, is to calculate the pointer. We can calculate the pointer by just taking the base base pointer of, that is the start of the arena, adding in the offsets, 
and that will give us the actual pointer to the cell data structure. So that's my plan for kind of optimizing a buddy system memory allocator to try to make it take a reasonable amount of space. I don't know if I actually recommend building the buddy system for the, uh, the challenge assignment. I definitely don't recommend building the buddy system as your first attempt at an optimized allocator. Probably I recommend starting with building some sort of simple linked list based allocator that works, singly linked lists, then worry about multi-threaded contention as your major issue next. So go ahead and make it so you can have multiple instances of that simple free list structure and call them multiple arenas. Add in your arena field so you know which arena to free to. Add in locks in the right place so it works and you can um, get your, uh, your lock and memory contention minimized. And then once you've built that system and benchmarked it to verify that it's not fast enough, then you want to consider tricks like the buddy system, which conceptually get you down to constant time for allocation and free. It's constant time if we treat 20 as being a constant. And I mean, even if this is 32 and you can have uh, a four gig arena, that's still a reasonably small constant, especially since we don't have to actually do this array traversal every time. We only have to do the array traversal when there isn't a thing available in the slot. And when there is a thing available in the slot, it's not just constant time, it's constant time and the constant is one. We look in the slot, we take the first thing and we use it for free. We uh, check the used flag, do the buddy calculation. And then um, if that buddy isn't free, we insert into the list in constant time where the constant is one. If the buddy is free, then we merge in constant time, but then we possibly have to do this traversal where it's constant time, but the constant is at most 30. So yeah, that's the buddy system. And I should be back to talk about uh, optimizing buckets, which is a little bit fun too.